It can be confusing to get your lab results back with several high and low values scattered all around. So what's important and what can I ignore on my lab result test? Hi, I'm Dr. Maria Conley, and today I'd like to present a high yield summary of how to interpret your lab results. This is a general overview of what I think is important and usually this is, this is typically what I look at first when evaluating a patient's lab test results. For a specific interpretation of your own lab test results, please consult your healthcare provider. First, it's important to realize that having a slightly high or low value might not be important. Lab results are reported according to reference intervals. The reference interval usually includes 95% of all the test results from a healthy population. So by definition, 5% of the population will have test results just below or just above that reference interval. On any one test, a healthy person has a 5% chance of having a test result above or below that reference interval. That probability increases to 64% when 20 tests are performed, such as a complete blood cell count, basic metabolic panel, and hemoglobin A1C level. So there's a good chance you'll be seeing some highs and lows on your lab results. So what happens after the phlebotomist draws your blood from the vein and seals it in that test tube? Well, your blood samples are then spun around in a machine called a centrifuge. A centrifuge uses centripetal force to separate whole blood into different components based on the individual density level of each component. Packed red blood cells, making up about 45% of the test tube sample, will settle in a layer at the bottom of the test tube. We call this volume the hematocrit. Next, there's a layer called the buffy coat, which is a thin layer of white blood cells and platelets that makes up less than 1% of the total blood sample in that test tube. The remaining 55% of the blood sample is plasma. This is the fluid portion of the blood, which contains proteins, nutrients, hormones, antibodies, and almost anything else that you can test for. Serum is very similar to plasma, but it doesn't have any clotting factors. Many lab tests are drawn either from plasma or serum. Some of the most important blood tests to look at include your hemoglobin A1C level and your glomerular filtration rate, or GFR for short. So what can these numbers tell me about my body? There are three important questions that can tell you exactly how well your body is working as a metabolic machine. First, how high is the pressure in my arteries? Your systolic and diastolic blood pressures will give you that answer. In general, your body works best when your systolic blood pressure, that's the blood pressure while blood is being pumped out of your heart, um, it's best if that level is less than 130, and then that diastolic pressure when your heart is filling with blood, less than, one, less than 80. Next, what is the average level of sugar or glucose in your bloodstream? For this answer, we now look to your lab test results. A hemoglobin A1C level gives us a good idea as it measures the percentage of your red blood cells that have sugar molecules attached to them. A typical red blood cell lives for three to four months in your body, so the hemoglobin A1C is a good estimate of your average blood sugar level over that, the previous three months before that lab was drawn. 
we also use hemoglobin A1c to diagnose diabetes. Typically, diabetes is diagnosed if you have two hemoglobin A1c levels of 6.5% or greater. This level is equivalent to an average blood sugar of approximately 130. At this threshold, chronically elevated sugar levels in the blood can become toxic to the eyes, nerves, and kidneys, potentially causing blindness, kidney failure, and nerve damage over time. Finally, how well are my kidneys working? To get this answer, look at your estimated glomerular filtration rate, or GFR. This is the best way of measuring how well your kidneys filter waste products from your blood and then dispose of them in the urine. Your GFR is included in a basic metabolic panel. Many labs report a filtration rate of 60 milliliters per minute per 1.73 meters squared, which is for body surface area, or above as normal kidney function. So 60 or above, normal. A filtration rate less than 15 is considered kidney failure. With age, it's common to see kidney function, kidney function gradually decline. The two most common causes of kidney disease are hypertension or high blood pressure and diabetes. So try to keep your blood pressure less than 130 over 80 and maintain a healthy weight. Keep your hemoglobin A1C level as close to 7% as possible if you're diabetic. There you have it. Looking at your blood pressure and the results of two common blood tests can give you a good idea of how well your body is working as a metabolic machine. Thanks for listening. I hope that was helpful for you.